Hey, what up? Nefarious Wes here. Now, ever since a renewed interest in retro video games and retro video game collecting, prices have been steadily climbing on old video games, especially NES. And while there are a lot of games that are out there that are like completely out of a lot of our price ranges, there are still a ton of fun games out there that can be found for under $10. And I thought it'd be a lot of fun to go over 10 games that I think are a lot of fun that can still be found for under 10 bucks today in the year 2020. So I'm going to base the prices of these 10 games off of PriceCharting.com and if you're familiar with that site then you're well aware that the prices fluctuate almost daily. A lot of these prices could have either gone up or down since I made this video. So let's go ahead and see what the 10 are. Easily one of my favorites on this list, how can you go wrong with Dr. Mario? Sure, it has a multitude of different iterations today, with most offering additional gameplay modes, but for under six bucks, the original is worth every damn penny. It's addictive, easy to get the hang of for newcomers, has an awesome two-player mode, and it's fun as hell. Even Grandma will enjoy this one. Not to mention our favorite plumber turned doctor has to kill off viruses, which unfortunately is very relevant in 2020, so it's totally relatable by today's standards. If you've never played Dr. Mario before, this is a great place to start, and for the small amount of cash that it commands, it's hardly a gamble. Konami made some of the best games on the NES, including sports titles. And you don't even have to know a damn thing about hockey to enjoy this one. Well, except maybe that the puck has to go into the opposition's net. Blades of Steel offers a quick-paced, simplified 8-bit version of the world's most violent sport on ice, omitting penalties and many of the game's basic rules, all the while retaining the crucial elements that makes hockey so great. Like fights. The screen switches to a close-up brawl where you duke it out with your opponent, where each player has his own life meter. How sweet is it to score a goal on someone after you've laid his ass out on the ice? Priceless. You even sometimes get a Gradius minigame during the second intermission and shameless Konami self-promotion. This game is really fun and I found myself wanting to keep going while capturing footage for this video. But don't expect a very realistic representation of the sport in this one, as juicy rebounds in front of an open net rarely translates into easy goals due to the auto-aim mechanic. But hey, for under six bucks, can you really complain? Now, I know some people would argue that Karnov isn't very fun at all, and at times, I myself would have to agree, but for its price, I say it's definitely worth a shot. As Karnov, you have to run, or waddle, your way through nine platforming stages while breathing fire from the bellows of the Circus Strongman's considerable girth. It's one of those games that requires you to pretty much shoot at all times. These projectiles can be upgraded to fire multiple streams. Karnov can also absorb two hits before dying, and collects a deluge of supplies to aid him in his quest, although having to use the D-pad to select the desired item while playing is a bit janky, although you can pause the game to do this as well. But that's what hinders Karnov. The jank. The jumping mechanics are floaty as hell, there are leaps of faith, and you'll even get stuck in walls. Combine this with only one musical track for the entire adventure, and it's easy to see why some wouldn't dig it. But for a 1988 title, Karnov does show some ambition with stages that offer multiple paths on top of swimming and flying levels. It's really up to you if you'd enjoy this one or not, but like I said, for its low price, why not add it to your collection and see for yourself? Deviating from its predecessor, EA took a different approach with Skater Die 2, turning it into a wacky, humorous adventure. With hilarious, well-animated cutscenes, complemented with a fantastic soundtrack, I'd recommend this skateboard shredder for that alone. But there's also a game to be played, and it's not too bad. The controls take some getting used to, seeing that you're on a board and all, but you can purchase upgrades from Rodney and his son Lester, while using several different weapons to fend off Icepick's cronies. The game only has four stages, including working at a mall, scavenging the beach for half-pipe plants, and an enormous warehouse maze that'll either require drawing a map or looking one up online. And if you prefer the simplicity of the events from the first game, there's even a really fun half-pipe mode to burn some steam off as well. Loaded with awesome music, tongue-in-cheek humor, and sweet-ass voice samples, I swear that Skater Die 2 is... Not bad. 
If you're familiar with my channel, you already know that I love shooters, so it'll be no surprise to see me mention a few here, and Gyrus just may be the most unique one of the bunch, as there really isn't anything else like it on the NES. While constantly flying towards the center, you move your ship around in this tube shooter, circling around shooting at the numerous baddies that envelop the screen. You fly throughout the solar system en route to the sun, with each planet being a level consisting of four types of stages. An initial one where all of the enemies must be vanquished, a stage where four pods must be destroyed on top of lesser foes, and another resembling the initial stages, only concluding with a boss fight before finishing the level with a bonus round. You can only upgrade your firepower once, and carry a maximum of seven bombs, but really that's all you need to have a blast in this extremely fun shooter. And it's made by Konami, so the soundtrack is absolutely killer. Hands down, one of the best games on the NES for under $10. I highly recommend Gyrus. Vastly different from the incredibly fun Dig Dug, Trouble in Paradise is still a joy to play. Taizo Hori returns in this Namco classic to once again do away with Pukas and Frygars, only this time on tiny islands. Hori returns with his air pump to overinflate baddies like balloons, but is also equipped with a jackhammer that can decimate entire chunks of island to send his adorable foes drowning into the sea below. The key in this one is to get as many baddies as you can on a piece of island, before toppling it to the waters below, taking every enemy with it to a watery grave. This is done by breaking the ground apart by using the jackhammer at designated weak spots in the soil. It takes a bit to get used to, but once you get the hang of it, Dig Dug 2 can get downright addicting. Another Namco gem, and one of the better shooters on the NES, is Dragon Spirit. In this one, you fly around as a dragon battling numerous monstrosities throughout the sky, on land, and even underwater. You breathe fire to blast enemies out of the air while hurtling bombs on baddies below. You collect an assortment of weapons to wipe out your adversaries, and can absorb several hits before succumbing to death, courtesy of a life meter. This game is a pretty one, with colorful and bright aesthetics, which can sometimes actually make projectiles and enemies a bit difficult to see, but is otherwise a delight to behold. And if you're not that good at shooters, there's no need to feel intimidated by this one, as it's a bit on the easier side, yet still challenging enough to warrant replay. With great controls, attractive environments, and a soundtrack to match, Dragon Spirit is absolutely a steal for under $10. For those who know me, this one shouldn't come as a surprise. Hell, I have artwork that pays homage to this design. Anyway, Renegade is an early beat-em-up which influenced the Double Dragon series, and seeing as both were developed by Technos, the similarities are pretty evident. Fighting off a street gang, you take on the role of Mr. K and battle an assortment of ugly thugs through four short stages of face-pummeling fun. One of the reasons that I love this game so much is that I can pick it up at any time and run through it within a matter of minutes. And if that sounds a bit too easy, there are three difficulty selections to choose from that really ramp up the challenge. You find yourself pitted against common hoodlums in the subways, biker gangs on the freeway, angry Americanized Sukaban, and other low-life punks. It may take a bit getting used to the B button always attacking to the left and the A button to the right, but once you do, you'll be serving knuckle sandwiches for lunch. An oldie but goodie, Kung Fu shares some similarities with the aforementioned Renegade simply because it can be completed within the time that it takes to microwave a burrito. Well, maybe not that quick, but it's another short pickup and play, and for under 10 bucks on the NES, I say that's a good thing. Thomas has to rescue his beloved Sylvia from the nefarious Mr. X, that was before this guy, through five grueling floors of the Devil's Temple, each guarded by a unique end boss. Each level is festooned with foot soldiers, knife-throwing bad guys, little people, and traps. It's one of those games that requires you to jump by pressing up on the D-pad, since A is used to punch and B to kick. The initial run of Kung Fu isn't too difficult to master, and once you begin to loop the game, the challenge only sucks you in for more. One of the NES's earlier titles, this one still holds up with its simple yet stellar graphics and sound effects. Everyone should own a copy of Kung Fu. <laughs> Often lauded as the best in the series on the NES, Double Dragon 2 The Revenge casts Billy and Jimmy Lee against the evil Black Warriors after Billy's girlfriend is whacked by the notorious gang. 
Using the same fighting mechanics as Renegade, where the A and B buttons represent left and right attacks respectively, this game stands tall over its predecessor by including simultaneous play, which the original sorely lacked. Where the game misses, though, in my opinion, is with its inclusion of absolutely redundant, god-awful garbage platforming. But if you can look past that, this game is a lot of fun, augmented by eye-pleasing visuals and excellent music, which complements its colorful cast of antisocial miscreants. Double Dragon 2 offers a hell of a challenge and will take a lot of practice and... <sighs> precise jumping the master. If you don't own this one yet, snag it. It's totally worth a saw buck. Alright, so that's just 10 games that can still be found for under $10 in 2020, and there are actually a lot more, so I'm going to go ahead and do a few of these, but I would like some suggestions from you guys, the viewers, because I'm sure there's some games that I have not played or games that I even thought about that still go for under $10 in 2020 that can easily be added to one of these lists, so let me know in the comments below. So until next time, I'll catch all of you guys later.